You're watching the evening edition of News on 2. I'm Adrian Seat. Now, the cabinet earlier today agreed to lower the voting age from 21 to 18. Youth and Sports Minister Syed Sadiq Syed Abdurrahman said the decision was made during the weekly cabinet meeting today and work on amending the federal constitution will commence soon. Syed Sadiq said amongst the things that needs to be done is to work closely with the youth wings of opposition parties as a two-thirds majority in parliament is required for the law to be amended. Dan dalam usaha untuk capai objektif tersebut, kita juga akan ada beberapa jenis pindaan yang lain. So it's a whole package um, untuk memastikan bahawa sistem pindahan raya lebih telus dan adil. Tetapi tadi yang diperincikan dan dipersetujui, yang dah confirm adalah undi 18. Sebab kita perlukan two thirds majority dan untuk kita dapat dua, dua ketiga majority ini, kita juga perlukan uh, sokongan dari mereka. Syed Sadi spoke on the matter during a press conference after attending the cabinet weekly meeting in Putrajaya. Furthermore, he said Attorney General Tommy Thomas and the Election Commission had also stated their agreement to amending the voting age. As 18 is the legal age of adulthood under Malaysian law, it is considered the age to take full responsibility of one's actions, such as being eligible for a driving test, marriage or to sign contracts. The Muar Member of Parliament is optimistic that 18-year-old Malaysians will be able to vote in the next general election. The Malaysia Anti-Corruption Commission, or MACC, will display the declaration of assets of Pakatan Harapan's members of Cabinet and Parliament on the Commission's portal as of October the 1st. Now, the move is in line with Prime Minister Tun Dr. Mahathir Mohamad's order for all Pakatan Harapan representatives to be transparent and corruption-free. MACC Deputy Chief Commissioner for Prevention, Dato Shamsun Baharin Mohamad Jamil, said the declaration of assets will be the first time such a thing has ever been done in this country. In addition, he said all Pakatan Harapan cabinet members and representatives need to declare their assets at the Prime Minister's office, which will later be sent to the MACC to be uploaded onto the MACC portal. As of now, the MACC has not received the full list of the declaration of assets. The Malaysian Anti-Corruption Commission, or MACC, today arrested a former Prime Minister, Dato Sri Najib Tun Raza, over a 1MDB case involving the alleged deposit of 2.6 billion ringgit into his personal account. Now, in a statement, the MACC said the arrest was made at 4.13 p.m. at the MACC headquarters here. The MACC said the ex-Prime Minister will face several charges under Section 23, Subsection 1, of the MACC Act 2009 and that he will be charged at the Kuala Lumpur Sessions Court tomorrow at 3 p.m. The MACC said it will collaborate with the Royal Malaysia Police or PDRM to record Adato Sri Najib's statement to assist the police's investigation under the anti-money laundering, anti-terrorism, financing and proceeds of Unlawful Activities Act 2001 before he is taken to court tomorrow. Two officials of the Felkra Berhad subsidiary, including a managing director, are in remand for five days from today for investigations into alleged misappropriation of uh, government funds and awarding of training contracts worth a four million ringgit. Putrajaya Magistrate Shah Wira Abdul Halim issued a remand order against the two suspects of following applications by the Malaysian Anti-Corruption Commission or MECC. The 53-year-old managing director and a 45-year-old business development and strategic marketing advisor at the same company are being held for investigations under Section 23 of the MACC Act. Their arrest was made after MACC carried out raids at 10 locations, including a Falkra subsidiary office in Setapa in Kuala Lumpur. According to MACC, the 53-year-old suspect was believed to have manipulated the tenders as well as appointed companies owned by his family members and friends to supply teachers, training experts and whole courses handled by the Falkra subsidiary. This is believed to have been going on since 2014, involving projects worth nearly 4 million ringgit. A 35-year-old senior officer from the Fire and Rescue Academy in Wakaf Tapai, Marang Chunganu, is under a seven-day remand order until 25th of September for the misuse of power. The remand order application was made in front of Kuala Chunganu Magistrates Court Assistant Registrar, Wan Azianti Wan Abdul Karim Elias Isa.
The officer was arrested at the Malaysian Anti-Corruption Commission headquarters in Trungano at 8.25 p.m. yesterday. Now, the accused was alleged to have used his position as the Senior Assistant Fire Commissioner of the Academy to recommend a contract to a company, Basu Global Enterprise. The contract was to supply walkie-talkie spare parts owned by the Academy in Wakaf Tapai worth 8,100 ringgit. The officer is now being charged under Section 23 of the MACC Act 2009. Twelve raids were conducted by Selangor police following the case where 17 people died due to methanol poisoning as at 8 a.m. this morning. Now, Selangor Police Chief Dato Mazlan Manso said the raids were conducted at sundry shops in Bukit Kemunting, Taman Sri Muda, Kampung Baru Subang, Section U Lima, in Shah Alam, Taman Sri Goba, Taman Daya, and Taman Sri Esan in Kuala Lumpur and Bandar Rinching Semenyih in Kajang. Datuk Maslan also said that during the raids, seven individuals were arrested, most of them foreign nationals. Tangkapan adalah terdiri daripada lima lelaki dan dua perempuan iaitu satu warga negara Myanmar, satu lelaki India dan um, satu lelaki China warga negara, warga negara Malaysia, dua lelaki warga negara India, satu perempuan Myanmar dan satu perempuan India. Of the 17 victims, one was a local, while seven were Myanmar nationals, two Bangladeshis, five from Nepal, one Indian citizen and an unidentified individual, all in their 20s and 30s. Police have reclassified the case under Section 304, subsection B of the Penal Code, for causing death, but without any intention to cause the death, which provides for an imprisonment of up to 10 years, or with a fine or both upon conviction. The remand orders for the main suspect, 21, and his wife, 32, for robbing a woman at a laundrette at Banda Putri Jaya and stealing from a 24-hour convenience store at Jalan Cintasayang, Taman Ria in Kedah on Tuesday have been extended for another five days until Monday. Now, the extension was granted by the Sungai Petani Sessions Court Assistant Registrar, Balkish Abdul Halim, to facilitate investigations. The suspect was arrested with his wife when his mother turned him in to the Kuala Bunda District Police Headquarters at 1.30pm on Friday. The suspects admitted to being involved in the incidents which went viral on the internet. Meanwhile, another suspect, age 20, was also remanded on Friday for six days. Kedah Police Chief Dato Abdul Rahim Jaffa said the suspect was arrested at the roadside in Juru Pulau Pinang at 7.30am on Sunday. The case is now being investigated under Section 395 and 397 of the Penal Code for gang robbery and if convicted, they can be sentenced to 20 years in prison and caning. A 40-year-old woman was shot by police when her husband attempted to escape from a police patrol in Bayudamai in Kota Tinggi, Johor, last night. Now, according to Johor Police Chief Dato' Muhammad Khalil Kadir Muhammad, a crime prevention patrol team tried to stop the suspicious-looking vehicle, but the driver attempted to speed off by running over a police officer who in turn fired three rounds of bullets. The 28-year-old suspect managed to escape after his car skidded and crashed, whereas the woman who was shot in the tie is now in stable condition and is being treated at the Sultan Ismail Hospital in Johor Bahru. Selain daripada menyiasat kes jenayah tersebut, we are also looking into the SOP dan rule of engagement berkaitan dengan pegawai polis yang melepaskan tembakan. Adakah ianya mematuhi standard dan piawaian untuk melepaskan tembakan dan sebagainya. So, that ada dual investigation kita lakukan di sini lah. Police have launched a manhunt for the suspect identified as Abu Hanifa Muhammad Yunus, whose last known address was recorded as Jalan Telo Ramunia, Ibasa, Kampung Baru Telo Ramunia in Kota Tinggi. The suspect also possesses several serious crime records for break-ins and theft in the Bayu Damai industrial area as well as drugs and car theft. The case is being investigated under Section 307 for attempted murder. Police have arrested the uh, 10 inmates of a juvenile rehabilitation centre in Kampung Gajamati, Pokot Sena in Kedah, who escaped last night. Now, the arrest was confirmed by Kota Star Police Chief ACP Mohamed Rozi Jidin in a statement this evening. ACP Mohamed Rozi said the detainees had records of drug cases and other criminal records.
Eight of the detainees have been sentenced while the remainder are still in trial. Now, the attempt to escape through the back of the building was detected by security guards at about 9 p.m. yesterday. All those arrested were between the ages of 14 and 17. Now, Kuala Lumpur police had conducted 137 raids at entertainment centres in Kuala Lumpur alone as of August, out of which some 1,532 suspects were arrested for drug-related offences, ranging from distribution to usage. Kuala Lumpur Police Chief Dato Sri Bazlan Lazim said in the latest raid, a police managed to cripple a drug a trafficking syndicate with the seizure of more than 500,000 ringgit worth of drugs. The success, he said, came following a tip-off by the management of various entertainment outlets in the city. Dalam pemerintahan dadah ni, tiga tempat saya akan beri perhatian, iaitu pertama di jalanan, yang kedua di pusat hiburan, yang ketiga di PPR, di flat flat yang mana kita rasa bahawa ada tempat yang mereka buat penyelenggaraan di kawasan flat. So itu adalah uh, objektif kita dan itu sebabnya pada tahun ini ianya telah meningkat kepada 137 sebuan. Johor police successfully crippled a non-existent loan scam syndicate after detaining 33 individuals during Ops Seagull 4 in Muar Johor involving losses of 383,201 ringgit. Speaking earlier today, Johor Police Chief Dato' Muhammad Khalil Kadir Muhammad said as a result of the operation conducted since June by the Commercial Crimes Investigation Department, 30 loan scheme scam cases have been solved. Dato' Muhammad Khalil said the syndicate's victim of choice are public servants' pensioners. Elaborating further, he said the modus operandi of the syndicate was to contact the victim, asking him or her to transfer money to a syndicate's account, convincing them with the sweet talk. The general public are thus advised to not fall for such requests and not to entertain calls from these syndicates. In another development, Johor police have successfully reduced the crime index rate to 6,884 cases for the period of January to August as compared to 7,542 cases last year. The Malaysian Maritime Enforcement Agency, or MMEA, has intercepted two Class C fishing local fishing boats and arrested nine Indonesian crew between the ages of 22 and 46 in an operation codenamed JAKSA at 2.30 a.m. today. Mersing MMEA Maritime Zone Director Commander Haris Fadzila Abdullah said upon further investigation it was discovered that the crew have violated rules under the Fisheries Act 1985 for violating the legal terms of permits related to fishery resources and the Immigration Act 1959. All the crew were taken to the MMEA jetty at Tanjung Gamo for further investigations. Commander Haris Fadzila, meanwhile, advised the public to comply with the law of the sea, as well as to safeguard themselves and their properties, especially during uncertain weather conditions while at sea. Two men have been killed in a crash between a motorcycle and a car at kilometer 65, Jalan Felda Pasa. Kota Tinggi in Johor at 11 a.m. today. Kota Tinggi Police Chief Superintendent Ashmon Bajah said that the motorcycle rider Muhammad Farid Ahmad Sambilan, 32, and the driver of the car, Sharif Abdul Karim, 73, died at the scene of the incident. Superintendent Ashmon said both vehicles were heading to Ringgit from Kota Tinggi. Preliminary investigations found that the crash took place when Muhammad Farid lost control of his motorcycle and crashed into the car driven by Sharif. Superintendent Ashmon said both bodies have been sent to the Kota Tinggi Hospital for further action. He added that investigations are being carried out under Section 41, Subsection 1 of the Road Transport Act 1987. And coming up, Dato Sri Anifa Aman quits Amno. That story up next. Stay with us. Thanks for staying with us. 
Naupati Keadilan Rakyat Vice President Nurul Iza Anwar says the reformasi road tour currently on its latest leg in Labuan was meant not only to remember the party's struggles but also to understand the problems of the people at the grassroots level. Nurul Iza said the road tour was also to inform the people of the party's upcoming General Assembly. Saya fikir ini uh, proses biasa dalam mana-mana pemilihan yang dianjurkan oleh pimpinan parti. Kita ada campuran ya uh, pimpinan yang mahu mengetengahkan wawasan kita. Tapi sudah tentu saya tekankan penting juga untuk kita mengutamakan suara ataupun isu-isu um, tempatan. Apa yang diperlukan oleh rakyat. Jadi it's not a one-way uh, discussion. Nurul Iza also gave her backing to the bridge project linking Labuan and mainland Sabah, adding that the project would not only foster unity amongst the people on both sides, but also boost their respective economies. The Permatang Pau MP said she will write to Federal Territories Minister Khalid Samad to consider the matter thoroughly. Dato Sri Anifa Aman confirmed today that he has quit AMNO, the second former minister to have left the party after Dato Sri Mustafa Muhammad, who resigned yesterday. The Minister of Parliament for Kimanis, who was the foreign minister in the previous Barisan National Government, said his resignation from the party he had served for over 25 years was effective immediately. Dato Sri Hanifa said his resignation is with immediate effect and he will also call a press conference soon on the matter. Dato Sri Hanifa defended his parliamentary seat with a majority of 156 votes in the 14th general election in May in a three-cornered contest. Earlier, Dato Sri Mustafa, who is the MP for Jali and State Assemblyman for Ai Lanas in Kelantan, announced his resignation from AMNO yesterday. He was the International Trade and Industry Minister in the previous government. On to sports. The search for an automatic spot in the Under-17 World Cup begins tomorrow as the national Under-16 squad test their capabilities at the AFC Under-16 tournament. The Malaysian boys will face their first assignment against Tajikistan in their opening Group A match at the Bukit Jalil National Stadium at 4pm tomorrow. Under-16 coach Lim Tiong Kim is confident that his charges will rise to the occasion, especially since they are playing in front of the home crowd. Lim said despite being in the same group as powerhouse Japan and Thailand, he is optimistic of the team's chances of qualifying to the next round. At the same time, he admitted that his boys may feel the jitters, but hoped that they can prove all the skeptics wrong with a strong performance in the tournament. Mereka ini kanak-kanak lagi. Umur baru 15 tahun. Jangan lupa bahawa mereka 15 tahun berdebar ataupun nervous. Ini semua biasa. Tetapi mereka mesti mengalami ataupun uh, mengalami masalah-masalah begitu supaya mereka akan satu hari menjadi mengalami men, memahami macam mana nak mengatasi masalah-masalah berikut. Lim's confidence was based on the team's positive showings during friendly matches prior to the tournament and also after studying the strengths and weaknesses of each opponent. Now, Sabah's Andre Anura, Elias Anwar, today broke the Malaysia Games of Sukma record for the triple jump and delivered a gold medal for his contingent in the 19th Sukma at Perak Stadium today. The athlete who hailed from Tanum set a new record of 15.91 metres to erase the previous record of 15.75 metres ahead of Kedah's Ahmad Firdaus in the 2008 Sukma in Trigano. According to Andre 19, he almost lost the slot to the final after being fault on two of his preliminary jumps before qualifying for the final. The silver medal went to Perak's Laojit Sung with 15.44 metres, while Mohamed Nazri Mustafa of Kedah took the bronze medal with a jump of 15.12 metres. The goal is the second medal for the Bukit Jalil Sports School student after winning a silver medal in the long jump yesterday. Andre said despite breaking the game's record, he was still not satisfied and would train to improve his performance. This morning's events also saw Sarawak's Wong Ni Ni win a goal in the women's javelin throw with a 41.22-metre effort. 
She finished ahead of Johor's Siti Aisha Nora Rahis, who recorded a 41.11 metre throw, and Federal Territory's Fatin Nur Shahira Chirahim, who recorded a 39.57 metre throw. Meanwhile, Johor's Muhammad Naufal Sharul Afzam struck gold in the men's pole vault with a 4.50 meter vault ahead of Federal Territory's Muhammad Zakaria Minsuri and Kelantan's Muhammad Izad Nordin. And that item concludes this evening's edition of News on 2. In our top story, Cabinet agrees to lower voting age to 18. Join us again at 12.30 tomorrow afternoon for more updates. Until then, I'm Adrian Seed. Stay tuned to TV2. Have a pleasant evening. The Tamil Bulletin is up next. Thanks for watching.